Hi and welcome back. So this is a speed paint that I'm voicing over. I was kind of lost for ideas for what to paint for my channel. So I decided to do this painting and it's a very loose wet and wet painting and the the general idea here was to produce something that is kind of a mixture of some abstract ideas with some impressionistic ideas to it too so not making any specific details or, or anything just kind of hinting at at shades and shapes and, and colors and this is a technique I do not master very well I started wetting out the paper and um, then I'm adding paints and um, parts of it worked and parts of it didn't work we'll get to that the paintings I'm using is my Daniel Smith watercolors there's quite a good deal of Primatech colors in here and if you don't know what the, the Primatech colors are that is uh, quite a few of them are semi-precious gems that has been ground down to pigment I got on this one I got for instance Ghana Genuine which is the pink right above the corner I dipped in it already um, and Auroronite and Jadeite is, is some of the semi-precious ones. Some of them are just other minerals. I got Bronzite Genuine and Burnt Bronzite. I got Mummy Bauxite, Hematite, Scarlet, Burnt Scarlet, and a few others on here. I'm using a Mayan Blue, mixing a, a blue for a green at some point. So yeah, I'm just kind of doing wet on wet and it gets very wet at some point where I have to give up before I've dried it. I'm just kind of hinting at some flowers there. I'm, I'm trying to paint some fireweeds and I didn't have a plan when I started but it came when I started using that color I dip in in the corner there all the time is a cobalt violet. And uh, that inspired me to, to try and do fire weeds. I don't have a uh, reference photo for this. It was just kind of out of memory of how fire weeds look to me. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a technique practice and I have had no hopes that this was going to be good. Yeah, I guess I always have hope. Otherwise, why do it? But um, I didn't expect it to be good. That was a Mayan blue right there in mid palette, and I mix it in with some some flato blue green shade, because all of a sudden I decided that I needed a blue sky, and that blue is not as bright in reality as it is on my screen. It is actually kind of a slightly muted blue, but at least on my screen it comes up very very bright. The other colors are not so far off, but that blue, especially while wet, looks really bright. So yeah, I'm just kind of dabbling. I'm pretty much using three kinds of strokes here. The blue, I used a kind of a sweeping cover, cover area <laughs> kind of stroke, and then it's dots and streaks for the rest. And this has been sped up to 210%. So I was actually painting fairly fast. And I do that for wet and wet. And one of the thing is I don't want things to dry before I am done doing things. Here I'm just trying out putting some of that garnet red down there and adding some of the both the mummy bauxite and the burnt bronzite to it. The Mummy Bauxite is down there at the bottom. I am actually just trying to clean up this palette for paint because I want to use it for something else. There's only 18 wells in there and I got 20. 
uh, colors so it doesn't really match so I'm trying to use up the paint that is in there and once that has happened I think I'm gonna put my core watercolors in there because I got 13 of those and I don't think I'll ever buy more than than that really maybe one or two others over time but so so that would fit better in there so I need a different palette for for these paints the um, cobalt violet and a garnet genuine and a rhodonite really mixed well to make a whole range of purplish pinks so they work well together I'm, I'm quite pleased with the tops of these flowers they came out okay and um, and as, as you can see I'm not really going into very much detail I'm just kind of hinting at changes in, in light and shade and, and color and I had really a big struggle with that with the leaves that that's where the fail is and this that just kept on turning into a green mat mass mess <coughs> sorry um, so um, yeah that was that was a fail of this that that I could have done better and I was trying different things and I'm using a hairdryer at the moment here because things just got so wet so when I tried to add kind of hint at, at leaf shapes and stuff, stuff it just kept on floating out yeah and it's so wet it ran off the paper and, um, and that deckled edge there is really thin but it holds a lot of water so it's really wet and so yeah dry it up so I can add some more yeah let's call it details yeah, I guess that is what it is but at least define my strokes a little better and um, yeah I'm showing you guys this and also even though it is in my opinion half fail because that was one of my promises to myself when I made the channel was to not hide the stuff that I didn't turn out from people because I think that's actually one of the biggest errors that people do and that is we, we only show others our successes so people who might have an idea that they would like to paint or draw or do any kind of art really they they only see the good stuff that others produce so they go oh my goodness and when I sit down it is just useless the, but the, th the, the truth of the matter is every masterpiece in the world s in reality sits on a pile of, of junk and um, and that's just how it is, it is you, something turns out good and other things less good and over time what you consider less good will change um, I'm in a couple of art groups on Facebook and it's quite funny what, what people post because they, there's people of, of all kinds of experience and um, I, I, sometimes people go, oh man, what what can I do to save this? And I'm looking at what they did, and they're way better than me. So I have no idea why they are not happy with what they did. And um, other times there's people who goes, oh, this I'm really happy how this turned out, and. I have a hard time finding words for it because I'm thinking, okay, if I had done that, I would have asked what to improve on. But I, I don't say anything um, unless people ask for critique. And even then they have to ask very specific for specific critique because it's not my place to, to, to teach people who are not asking for it. 
but I can have an opinion about stuff and I expect people to have opinion about my stuff as well um, that's that's not the, the thing and um, so yeah so so in in another year I will think this is even worse than I think it is today and um, other people would be really happy if they had done this so so that's that's really different and difficult this just t turns darker and darker as more as I try to get some something in there <laughs> I'm trying to differentiate the, the the leaves but the whole thing is too wet and the paper is not working with me and uh, I'm too impatient and I should maybe just have done a few light strokes and left it at that but no I keep on painting more and more green on top of green and they won't differentiate from each other so as happy as I am with the flowers I really like that how 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 they turn out as I work on them but the leaves no and I've been trying to cover them up after I finished and see if it would help if I cut down the bottom quarter of the paper but it's just too massive and too dominant so lesson learned go lighter on the green next time it's definitely something where I I might go in and do a different version of this where I maybe just go with one one flower I remember to color my background in first and then just do like maybe a single flower because then I just have need a couple of three or four or five leaves or something on it this just gets worse and worse as I try to but then again once you have done something wrong you might just as well try some things out here I'm actually trying to to do something called negative spaces which is uh, it took me a while to figure this out you you <laughs> it's the art of not painting or painting around stuff you will leave so uh, maybe not right now but at some point you will see me try and paint around leaves trying to to leave some some light areas that will ha look like a leaf but I totally fail at it I never quite got the the negative space concept down still trying it now and then to to understand it better but so, yeah and these uh, what are they called Primo tech colors they, they're best suited for wet and wet techniques some of them the jadeite and the rhodonite and the Mayan blue I would say could be used as regular colors the others are quite granulating and they mix kind of funny um, oh yeah the G garnet genuine is, is good for regular painting as well but like the hematite burnt scarlet which is the very dark co color sitting above that violet I'm, I just dipped in that is heavily heavily separating and you can't really mix it with stuff so that that is I am using it a little bit towards the end and that's okay because I'm using a dark color on something already dark but uh, as a mixing color it's really weird um, and the same with there's a Piemontite Pim genuine and that sits above the the, the the pink one I'm not using it in here it's a it's a dark reddish color and it does the same thing it, it's heavy granulating there's some black grains in there and it separates out in, in different colors so it's it's great for this kind of painting if you want to have a paint that just do things on its own without you doing much other than putting it on the paper but it's really strange to to mix with there's a hematite black on here too and that does exactly the same thing so those at least those three are very strange to to work with um 
the, the if you, if you like heavy granulating paper uh, paints and things that separate, they they're great, and I think that it's they're fun to work with in wet and wet. Maybe not this detail as this actually ended up being, but um, if you're just playing with colors and stuff, yeah. Now I think here is where I'm. No, not yet. I'm getting more and more desperate here. <laughs> oh my goodness, and I'm continuing. I'm, I'm really working hard to try and save this. But you can see the blue as it dried. It, it, it dried up not as bright turquoise blue as, as when it was wet, which was good. Yeah, this is just getting worse and worse and getting darker and darker. And that stem over there just looks more and more messy. Hmm. And what to do? At some point, I actually get up and leave. I dry my my paints first, and then I get up and leave. And I left the camera running for uh, twenty minutes or more. Um, I clipped that out. <laughs> so. Um, I think it's after this, so if there's a little weird gap here, that's that's why. I got thirsty, and it's important with something to drink, and I needed to to go away from it for a little while. I tried on the edges there to use a warmer green than in the middle because I wanted the kind of the middle to subside a little into the background and a trick to try and do that with is to use cool colors for the back things you want to push in the back and warmer colors for things you want to bring to the front and here it just ended up in one big messy green mess yeah there when then had something to drink. Think about it. Trying to show you there's natural glitter in burnt bronzite and rhodonite, so it actually glitters. It's really difficult to show on the camera. So here we go again. Now we give it a full blast on that dark green. And it is just nope. The nope and no. Things just get worse. I'm not sure I was still having fun or if I was just getting a little desperate here. I think it was a mixture. Definitely overworked it well and thoroughly <laughs> already. <coughs> yeah, try and cover some of all that white over there so it didn't look so lost. Helped a little bit, but it didn't magically turn into a great painting. At this point there's nothing I can do to save it really. It won't stop me from trying though. Let's see here is where I think I begin to outline some some leaves. Yeah, and here I decided to add some amethyst violet to do some more darker shading at the bottom of the flowers. That one there is that amethyst violet. It's it's another prima tick color and um, it's uh, it's a brilliant violet that, that can use it and others can use it as well. I use it kind of in place of uh, dioxazine violet. It's not quite as dark as that, but it ha it can be used in in the same kind of way. 
It doesn't create quite as dark a black if you mix it with with yellow, but can definitely work. So we're getting closer to the end here. I think there's a couple of minutes left. And um yeah, the flowers turn out okay. Still kind of while I was doing that, I was still thinking about what to do with the leaves, but they needed some rest. I add a little bit of that pink and violet down into the greens to try and also get them to to at least look like they belong on the same painting. Yeah. Nope, it's not going to get any better. I used quite a few colors on this. I, I made a list and I'll put it underneath in the description of the video I used three six nine I used 12 colors for this which seems to be quite a lot it is for me anyways but many of them is kind of very similar like the burn bronze side and the mom meat box side they they're very very close in in color um, and yeah, the amethyst and the rhodonite and the garnet and the cobalt violet, they, they're kind of close to, they're, they're different, they're, they're not identical, but they're close enough that they, they don't uh, disturb each other very much. And then, yeah, I use two different yellows in, in order to try and make different greens. Yeah, here I'm trying to, this is where I'm trying to do the negative space thing. It doesn't really work for me. And this is the part where I shouldn't have done because I'm getting way too detailed now and this ruins the whole idea of the painting. But as I said a long time ago, that painting was far beyond saving at that point so might just as well try stuff out and um, yeah we are getting close to the end here enough this is how it's gonna be so uh, thank you all for watching throw me a like subscribe and bye bye